your biggest about of your life is going to be in a situation where you're facing Verlander and you're 0 for 20. How are you going to act and, and, and prepare and, and, be, and be great? Then I heard, oh, well, you probably won't get drafted very high because you're small. And I'm like, geez, man. <laughs> I didn't realize we were at Disneyland and there's a height requirement <laughs> to play in the major leagues. Is it true that David did not know your real first name was Dustin? Yeah, he <laughs> called me Pee Wee. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, man. You know, you know, you once wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Born to Play. And yeah. I, my theory is this is the greatest book title ever because <laughs> that's you. You're, you're born to play. Is, is there anyone who loves being a baseball player more than you? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, it. I yeah, I like that name, too, because there's really nothing else I can do than play <laughs> baseball. Off the middle, Padrea spears it, flips it out of the glove out there. Twin killing started by Pedroia. Well, let me tell you that the, the reason that I wanted to have you be part of, of, of this series, Baseball Stories, is you know, there are too many negative people in the world who are always telling us what we can't do and what we can't be. And I, I'm a big fan of positive people, and that's you. <laughs> and I, I, I guess my question would be how, how much of what you've done in your career? is a product of you having that belief on what you could do and what you could be? Uh, I mean, I think all of it. I mean, it, you know, the, my whole life, I haven't been very big or very, you know, strong. I don't weigh a lot or, or anything like that. So, you know, I think you, if you tell yourself something mentally that you could do something, you're going to do it. Up the middle, Pedroia from shallow center, the throw, got him! Boy, he made that play so easy. My goal since a kid was, you know, whatever game I play, you know, you try to win it and have fun with your teammates. So, you know, I always stay positive because baseball is a game of, of failure and negativity. If you go, you know, three hits out of ten at bats, you know, you're really good. <laughs> so you fail seven times, but you got to try to find a way when, you know, you're in that that tough stretch to to stay positive and find a way to get out of it. And um, you know, I think that's what I enjoy the most. High fly ball in the left field, backing up Dickerson, still backing up, backing up, backing up. Kiss it goodbye! He hit it out! Pedroia with a grand slam! What an at bat! Yeah, and of course, you've, you've had to face more of it because of the size human being you are. <laughs> how, how old were you when people first started telling you, you're too short, you're too um, this, you're too that? <laughs> well, probably once I got to college. I mean, I never, you know, I played high school ball. We, you know, I, I, I made the area code uh, team. Right. And I went to that, and I played great, and I got a scholarship to Arizona State a ton of college coaches were calling me I got offers from everywhere so I didn't really you know the size thing it didn't really I didn't think of anything about it but then I played good my freshman year and my sophomore year at school and you know then I heard oh well you probably won't get drafted very high because you're small and I'm like geez man they, there's a, <laughs> I didn't realize we were at Disneyland and there's a height requirement <laughs> to play in the major leagues but you know that was my thought and and you know I didn't really hear about it until you know, I was draft. You know, my junior year in college. Of course, you did face it. I know in the minor leagues, and then you get to the big leagues. You didn't get off to a real good start, hitting 182 yeah. that April of your rookie year. I think the thing that helped me the most was I had never struggled in, in baseball, you know, statistically until 2006. I my first at bat of spring training, I I took a swing and kind of the bat slipped out of my hand and I tore my labrum in my shoulder. Right. So I rehabbed that. I think it's six weeks, and I missed the first probably two, three weeks of the AAA season, and, I, and it was cold, freezing cold. I started out slow. My first 200 bats, I was hitting like 210. So that's the first time I had ever done that. Every, every other year, I'd get off to a hot start and just keep it rolling. So I had to learn, hey, how, how am I going to get out of this? And it's, and it's baby steps. It's, it's one bat at a time, one pitch at a time. And sure enough, by August, I was hitting 310, and I ended up getting called up. So. When I called up, I, I struggled again. The thing that kept me there was, I, one, I was playing great defense, and two, we were in first place by like seven games. 
helpful. We were, yeah. <laughs> so that I think that and 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 Alex Cora was our utility guy and he was playing great and he was mentoring me so they kept me around but it was a time where I needed to start hitting and luckily I did. Yeah, Pedroia drives it out towards deep left center field. Rosario back, and that ball is gone. A two-run home run. Now, you bring up Alex. What were some of the lessons that you learned from Alex? And if you could just even put into words what that meant in terms of the success that you've had in your career. When you get called up, especially in this environment, it, it seems like everything is magnified. If your team loses and, and you go for four, you're the problem. And that's what you think. And he was there telling me, you know, you're not the problem. It's, it's just a part of it. You're going to have games in the major leagues where, you know, you're not going to have a chance. But then there's games where you're going to be good, you know. So we, you haven't got as, a lot of games to be good yet. You're yeah, going to be. Right. So I, I kept that mindset of, because that's the opposite of how I am. I, if I want to do something, I, I got to do it now and, or keep doing it until I do it. Um, but he kept saying, hey, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And sure enough, it, it did. It's incredible that he winds up as your manager. <laughs> The fact that you two are so close, how does having him as your manager change your relationship? Oh, um, it doesn't. I mean, it's it's still the same. I mean, he, you know, it's like anything. If, you know, he asked me to do something, I'd, I'd do it right away or vice versa. I mean, it's yeah. it's not, you know, anything different. I mean, we, we care about each other. We care about, you know, everybody that's around us. So, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, doesn't matter any situation you know we're always going to be there for each other you drop whatever you're doing and, and you you're, you're right there for for the people that you love and 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 he's one of them yeah now is that especially valuable to you right now I mean you're coming off a, a, a knee surgery I would say it's the most serious surgery that you've ever had in your career right but you don't have to prove yourself to the manager at all nobody believes in you more than him um, you're always trying to prove something, I mean, to, to somebody. Going to be another extra base hit for Pedroia. At least two. Thinking three. Altuve's relay not in time. Pedroia with a triple. You know, there's some fan that just showed up for his first baseball game, and if you're playing in it, you want to make, make an impression on them, and you're always trying to prove something to somebody. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, the, the Red Sox still list you at 5'9", like 175, one really? right? So... I think this would be the time for you. What's my, yeah. You, 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 you can tell us, what is your real size? I'm like 5'8", 170. Well, that's pretty close to 5'9", 175. Yeah, I mean, it's like anything. The NBA, they give you another inch and yeah. add some weight. Right. But So so you versus Jose Altuve, who, who's bigger? I mean, he's. I think he's thicker than me. I'm, I don't know how much he weighs, but I probably got an inch on him. You, you've got to have at least an inch. Yeah, an right? inch or two. I don't know, but he's definitely right. stronger. He is one strong. Yeah, he player. is. He, yeah. He's strong. He is. Now, this seems like it's the golden age of little guys, right? So let me ask you about a few of them. When you watch Jose Altuve play, what yeah. do you think? I, I mean, I, I love it. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you see another guy that is, is obviously smaller, but he plays like a big guy. Do not try to sneak a piece of cheese by Altuve. He is too quick for that nonsense. That's pretty cool to see. Just shows a lot of kids that, you know, you don't have to, you know, be the biggest guy in the world. You could still, you know, be one of the best baseball players in the world if, if you work hard and, and, and do the right thing. So, you know, I think it's pretty cool. When you're playing in a situation like that, nothing gets through. I mean, that's your mindset. And I'm thinking if they hit it near me, I want to get an error so they don't get a hit. <laughs> Watch Pedroia makes a sprawling stab. Can he get the out throw? And out at first. Dustin Pedroia in right field. Wow. Some play. That a gold glove play. You're obviously a, a, a great athlete. If you weren't, you wouldn't have an MVP and a rookie of the year and 1,800 hits. But I think my favorite thing about watching you is that it feels like your, your sense of belief and inner strength is so strong that you can almost will stuff to happen that has no business happening. You ever get that feeling? <laughs> um, sometimes. I mean, you, you, it's like anything. You don't, you don't want to lose, and, and you, you play out plays in your head. You want to try to put yourself in the right position defensively and, and, and come up, you know, if you're up to plate, try to get a, a pitch to hit and, and make sure you hit it. So you're always playing things in your mind. So, you know, a lot of times it works out, and a lot of times it doesn't. So, um, but... 
I don't know. That's baseball. Right. Let, let me give you a couple examples then of signature moments that, that stick in my head. One is this is the play uh, last year against the Rangers. Ground ball to third base, wild throw. And he'll skip back up on the drive, back to first base to tag, and he, he got, got him. him! He got him! Of course you're backing up the play at first. Ball takes a crazy carom. How did you ever contort your body so you stopped that ball? And how did you ever get it to first base for now? Um, there's only like one time where I haven't gone and backed up a throw from that side of the diamond. So I've done it a million times. It's just, you know, every ballpark you go to, as I always look at, you know, if there is a bad throw, how it's, you know, like Baltimore, they have the tarp over there. So you got to, you know, take a deeper angle because it rolls up the tarp. Right. But Texas has that brick there. So, you know, I, I knew to take a deep angle and I kind of, when it hit, I stopped because it's going to come back. And I was just lucky enough that it bounced right there and it went in. The ball went in the air. I, I usually am not, I have the smallest hand, so I was kind of shocked I caught it with my bare hand. <laughs> and Mitch was right there, you know, and it just worked out good. So, I mean, I think it was the preparation to know how it's going to come off the, the brick wall. But, I mean, other than that, it was kind of a lucky, lucky deal. Luck is the, uh, <laughs> the, the product of preparation and imagination. Yeah. So you have both. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me give you another one. Um, i sure you remember this play. This is the Clay Buckholz no hitter. <laughs> Miguel Tejada hits a ball up the middle. Tejada back up the middle, diving as Pedroia gets up and throws him out. And this ball is past you. I mean, it's behind you. <laughs> Again, did, like, did you refuse to accept that this ball was going to be a hit? I mean, when you're playing in a situation like that, you, you don't, nothing gets through. I mean, that's your mindset. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm thinking if they hit it near me, I want to get an error so they don't get a hit. You know, you just <laughs> yeah. got to, you know, and and I ran as fast as I could and dove as hard as I could. And I lucky I caught it. And then it was just get up and throw it as hard as you can over there. So it, it, it worked out. But those those are, you know, really nerve wracking situations because you, you just want to you want to do anything you can to help your pitcher out. <laughs> right. Well, have you ever had a ball hit into your area where you didn't say to yourself, this ball's got to be caught? I feel like I want, I'm going to make every play. You have to have that mindset. Yeah. I remember when I first got called up, I played short, and Gary Sheffield was up. And I was like, man, if he hits me the ball, I hope he doesn't hit it hard because he might knock me through the wall. <laughs> so, right. you know, there's, you know that, that's probably the only time where I'm like, man, this is, this is going to be a grind. But other than that, I, I mean, I want the ball hit towards me. I want to be, be the guy to make the play, and, and that's it. Same thing when you're uh, up to bat. Yeah. Have you ever mailed in at bat, right? Or, no. not, or not taken it at bat seriously, ever? Um, no. Fly ball right field, well hit. Sousa back, track and wall, leaping up, it gets out of here! Home run, Dustin Pedroia! And he is all fired up! Every at bat you go up to the plate could be your last at bat. And, you know, you're trying to find a way to, to compete against the other guy. It's pretty, the, the, the fun part about it is, is you're, you're competing against the best in the world. There's nobody better than the guys out there on the mound. So, you know, you, you, you find out a lot about yourself when you, when, when you compete against them. And, um, you know, that's the good part. You know, people don't know how hard that is. <laughs> I, I mean, baseball is a grind. Yeah. Major League season is a grind, and it takes its toll on everybody. So you make it seem so easy, right? You're playing a game, <laughs> you, you take every bat seriously. It's hard to do. I mean, you have to have mental toughness to, to be able to, you know, if it's a 10 run game or, or you know, your, your legs hurting or, you know, whatever the situation, it's cold, whatever the situation is, that could be your last at bat. You know, what, what are you going to do? How are you going to, how are you going to act? And, and, cause that's the most important thing. It's, it's, it's not about how you feel. It's how you act. I tell the, our young guys is your biggest about of your life is going to be in a situation where you feel bad. You don't feel good at the plate. You're in the playoffs and, you're facing Verlander and you're 0 for 20, <laughs> but it's the biggest about of your life. How are you going to act and, and, and prepare and, and, be, and be great? I go, hey, what's up, man? David walks over and goes, what the f did he call you? And I go, what? He goes, what did he call you? I said, Dustin. He goes, hey, why did he call you that? I go, that's my f name. This one toward the center of the infield. There is Pedroia behind the back, and he got him. That's not an easy play whatsoever. 
let's do some uh, some quick hits, some fun stuff, all right? You know, you've been known to do a little uh, talking before games, chirping, right? Uh, favorite player, opposing player of all time for you to trash talk before games? Um, I mean, there's, it's Too all many? good. It's all, no, no, <laughs> it's all, it's all good fun. Of I mean, course it is. You know, I, I mean, I've said some things to some, you know, players that it's not really talking trash. They're probably like thinking, man, this guy's crazy. <laughs> like, I remember. Give me an example. Uh, well, David Wright, a couple years ago, we were playing the Mets and, uh, I was, I was hurt and I was sitting there and a foul ball came over and, uh, he looked right at me. He goes, Hey, what are you doing over here? Little guy. Can you see over the rail? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let me go get my get my rings and stand on those things so I could see eye to eye. And it was in front of our whole team, and, and David just went, I can't say anything to that. So it, that was probably, that was my favorite because I played with David on the in the WBC, and yeah. we got, we're pretty close. Um, he's a great guy, so he, he, he could take that. He loved it. He thought it was funny. I, I know all these guys you talk to can yeah. take it, right? Yeah. We want to thank you for how you made us feel, and it's love. And, and you're not our teammate, you're not our friend, you're our family. And it'll be like that until the day we die. So thank you, we love you. Uh, you took part in the David Ortiz roast, right, last year? Yeah. And you told a story, is it true that David did not know your real first name was Dustin? Yeah, he <laughs> called me Pee Wee. Catcher comes over to me and goes, hey, what's up, Dustin? I go, hey, what's up, man? David walks over and goes, what the f did he call you? <laughs> I go, what? He goes, what'd he call you? I said, Dustin. He goes, well, why'd he call you that? I go, that's my name. He goes, oh, is that right? I'm like, yeah, bro. I played 1,600 games with you. I probably, they, they've actually said it 5,000 times. Now batting number 15, Dustin Pedroia. And he goes, I thought it was Pee Wee. But that's good that he didn't pick up. He's, he's locked into his at-bats. He didn't even know what the PA announcer was saying. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> that's an all-timer. Yeah. All right, here's one I've wondered about. Is it true that 2007, Colorado, <laughs> game three of the World Series, you showed up and the security guard, the security guard did not want to let you in the park because he didn't believe you were a player? Yeah, but. That is true. That is, that, yeah, well, that's true, but I think Tito put the security guy up to that. He would never do that. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Would. And then he knew I would get fired up and all that, but yeah, that, that happened. What did the guy say to you that made you suspicious? Well, I just, he just, he, I was already walked in and he caught me from the, like, he thought I was just like intrude, you know, breaking in. And so <laughs> he just yelled, hey, you guys gotta get out of here. I'm like, no, 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 I'm a player. And he, I showed him the card and he's like, anybody can make one of these, you gotta go. And I'm like, all right, man, you know, and I just kept walking, but. I might have said some other things. I mean, that was 11, have... 12 years ago. Was, yeah, I don't even remember. When I was, I don't think I was like cussing or anything, but it was all fun. Driven deep to left field, a long home run for Stanton. Now there's all this focus in your division on the guys who are playing in the Bronx now, right? Stanton <laughs> and Judge are they're really, really large. Yeah. Teams. How does your team stack up to them? Um. Well, I'm glad we're not playing basketball or, or, <laughs> or things like that. Um, no, I mean, they're very powerful. Um, you know, you've seen what, what they've done over, over, especially Santon, over a long period and, and what Judge did last year. Uh, even, I mean, Sanchez behind the plate. Deep to left field. Fair ball. The game's over. See ya. A walk-off three-run home run for Gary Sanchez. You know, those guys, they hit the ball a long way, so... You know, they got a great team. The Yankees always have great teams, you know, but so do we. So it'll be fun competing against them and, and playing, and, um, you know, that's what it's about. Now, I, like, I'm amazed at how few people mention that the Red Sox are coming off back-to-back first-place <laughs> finishes for the first time since Babe Ruth played for the Red Sox. And the Red Sox are the champions of the American League East for the second consecutive year. Shouldn't that be a topic? <laughs> well, um, I don't know. I mean, it, we don't. You know, I don't really pay attention to, to you know, what what is said or, or written about because, you know, it you just you just show up and, 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 and try to get better every single day as a team and, and individually and, and that's all you can do. So, you know, the stuff that's said or, or written can only make you complacent complacent and, and 
you know, not focus on what, what the task is of, of, of winning games together. All right. Well, it seems like a tough group. And I mean, we, we spent a lot of time, probably too much time talking about your size, but your toughness, <laughs> I would I would put up there with anyone in the game. I, well, last year, you, you hurt your knee, what, in April, right? Yeah. The, the Manny Machado slide was April. Pedroia taken out. Machado is done, but Pedroia a little shaken up on the play, and he's going to come out of the game. How were you able to play a hundred uh, some <laughs> games? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, some of it wasn't fun, but you just try to find a way and be out there for for your teammates. I mean, that that's basically it. So, you know, it's a part of the game. Some, you know, my job as a everyday player is to play. You know, you're going to go through times, especially in the middle of the infield, that we're, you know, you bad hop ground ball and you you know, break your finger or Mitch hits a ball off his toe and breaks his toe. Yeah. But it's our responsibility to be out there. Um, you know, that's what we get paid to do. And, you know, if I felt like I could, you know, play 110 games, I, you know, I wouldn't be like I normally am. But, you know, I feel like you being out there could maybe push other guys to, to, to you know, be the best they could be too. Well, when you're playing in that much pain, uh, do you have to do things different? You do, don't you? Um, yeah, you got to. You got to basically kind of submit to some things. You know, if I couldn't, I couldn't hit a ball down and away. You know, to where because if I got out on my knee and go to run, it would kind of give out or you know things like that. So, to which I hurt my thumb in 2013, and that's the only pitch I could hit. <laughs> so if they threw me in, I had zero chance. But last year, you know, I I could hit balls closer to me. You know, because I could kind of lean on my backside and kind of push it and use my hand-eye coordination. So I tried to not swing at balls, you know, away from me. So you, you just try to make an adjustment on the fly. And, you know, some days you did, I did feel good, you know. But, really? you know, there's some days where it was, it was a grind. So you had, to, you had to be smart about it. How about in the field? I, that, that had to really be challenging. Um, yeah, some days, you yeah. know, the, especially like some day games where the infield gets hard. Right. Uh, but it's a part of the job, you know. You got, you got to be out there, you know, I don't want to look back when my career's over and be like, man, I wish I'd have done this or wish I'd have done that. You know, when I'm done, I'm just going to go home, be a dad and, you know, say I did everything I could. When I played, it was fun. Yeah, but in the meantime, you're born to play. So yeah, what, right? what's the over-under on games you'll play this year once you get healthy? Um, what do you think? Oh, I mean, I mean, I could play, I feel 10 times better than last year right now. So. <laughs> You know, we're going from there. Uh -huh. All right, we're not going to put a number on it, but yeah. whatever it is, when you play baseball, we're going to be happy to watch. Thank you. Dustin, thank you very much for joining us, man. Thank Thanks. You.